Hey friends, today's video is kind of a dumb one, but it's a thought experiment that I've had very often because as people build PCs, they usually end up forgetting a few things along the process. Usually it's the IO shield on the motherboard or it's something a bit worse, like not remembering to remove the plastic that's at the bottom of your cooler right before you install it. I have done this a couple of times, but I've never really done it to the point where I have uh, run it for a significant length of time or seen what the ramifications could possibly be in a more long-term fashion. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to see what happens when you accidentally leave the plastic on your cooler. We're going to run it through a few stress tests. We're going to run it across multiple different chips if we can, if we don't burn off the plastic. I only have one cooler, so we're going to get as far as we can with that. But I've already tested our Ryzen 1200 AF chip on the stock Wraith Stealth cooler. So we have a baseline temperature. Now we're gonna use the Hyper 212 with the plastic still on. I have not peeled this off. I have not reapplied it. We're going to just try it and see what happens and move along from there. Also, if we can get to it, we're gonna be testing a Ryzen 7 3700X as well as an i9-9900K and see how each of them handles the cooler with its plastic still on. So let's get the stock cooler off of this puppy so that we are able to actually now use the cooler that was improperly mounted. Myself personally, I've only ever accidentally left the plastic on, I think once, and that was even after I explicitly said out loud on the live stream that I was building the PC on, I need to remember to take this off before I install it. But you know what? I didn't. This is when I need my finger gloves because I can't see what's going on in there. I'm gonna rock my finger gloves. In case you want some finger gloves, I'll link them in the video description. You can pick these up on Amazon. They help so much with PC building, when especially in these dark corners, even though I have a bright light, I can't see what's going on right over here, but now I can because of my finger gloves. So let's go ahead. I can see you now, baby. So that's off. Now we got to clean off the thermal paste on the 1200 and then put the Hyper 212 Black, which is the cooler that we're going to be using and get that mounted and ready to go. There we go. Clean boy. Ryzen 1200 looking clean. We're gonna be using the same thermal paste across each one, the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut that's going on everything just to keep it standard. There we go. Okay, cooler securely fashioned onto the CPU with the plastic still at the very bottom. So we're gonna be able to mount the fan and then be good to go. I need my other finger gloves because I'm using my right hand now. Okay, with the Badly Cooler installed, it is time to turn this baby on. It should work perfectly fine. So we're gonna put this CPU under a stress test, which is just 100% load to see how long uh, or how long it takes until it might eventually start thermal throttling. With the stock cooler at 100% load, after about 13 minutes, we're hitting only 60 degrees Celsius. But as you can see here, we're booting up just fine. So we can load into the AMD Ryzen Master software, which is gonna give us the best indication of what temperatures we're actually seeing right now. And currently we're sitting at 37 degrees with nothing else going on, which isn't too bad for a stock setup. Obviously uh, we haven't hit this with any sort of load whatsoever, but obviously the plastic can still dissipate some of the heat of the cooler. Plastic is not necessarily not able to dissipate thermal. So let's go ahead and boot up the stress test. We're gonna peg it to 100% and just watch these temperatures over the next 10 minutes or so and see what's going on. Honestly, we're at 53 degrees Celsius right now, which isn't terrible, especially compared to the stock cooler, which again, averaged 60 degrees after 10 minutes while doing the stress test. So just after two minutes on, we're actually at a higher temperature now than the AMD stock cooler was, but we're actually not at a really, really high temperature, which is kind of nice to see. We're at 62, but we're still continuing to climb and it actually hasn't stopped its ascent just yet. We're gonna give this up until 10 minutes and then see where we are at the end of that or until we get a thermal limit or any sort of uh, down clocking that happens due to the fact that it's overheating. So here we are at the 10 minute mark and honestly, our temperatures are looking pretty fantastic. We've basically stabilized at the 63 and a half to 64 degree region on this cooler with it never going above 64 degrees whatsoever. And that is again at 100% load for that entire 10 minutes. In a normal gaming scenario, you're not hitting your CPU quite as hard as what we did here. And obviously you can see that I'm testing this with an open air setup, but that's how I tested the stealth cooler. So I just wanted to make sure that I'm matching it. But you add on the 
panels to your PC, you might add a few degrees, but 64 degrees on any cooler, I would just assume is, hey, that's not great, but it's not bad. So like, I would never have even thought about it twice had I left the plastic on unintentionally and just completely had forgotten about it. So this is actually a pretty good result on the Ryzen 3 1200 AF. I would say if you install your plastic CPU cooler, it's not really going to affect anything in the short term. Obviously in the long term, you might be susceptible to damage, but we're gonna take this off, see if the plastic has any sort of warping and see what th that's done. But the Ryzen 3 1200 is only a four core, four thread processor. So we're gonna try it on the 3700X, which is eight cores and 16 threads and has a higher TDP. And then if that doesn't conk out, then we're gonna try it on the 9900K. So let's go ahead and install 3700X. Well, now with the cooler taken out, you can see that even with the CPU being at over 60 degrees Celsius for quite a while, there's not any physical damage to the plastic on the bottom of the cooler. It's really just the residue of the thermal interface material, which I will now clean off and install the 3700X and get that set up to see if we have any worse results, which I'm sh assured we will because the TDP is higher and so it should be a little worse, but we'll see if it's thermal throttling worse. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this 3700X on and do the same stress test, see what results we end up with. We're just gonna leave everything on stock for the 3700X, not touch anything, because, I mean, if you're just getting one of the Hyper 212 Blacks, you're probably not overclocking too high anyways, and Zen 2 doesn't really overclock that much. So I think this should be a good indication of everything that we have going on. Okay, at stock, we're actually not at terrible temperatures, 41 to 42 degrees Celsius, which is obviously higher than we were on the 1200, but let's go ahead and load up the stress test see what we can get there and oh yeah even as we're trying to load the thing it's hitting 50 degrees celsius so if we burn this baby out 100 load yep there immediately 85 86 we're still over four gigahertz but we're at 90 degrees celsius uh if we drop below four gigahertz we're going to start losing some clocks i think the base clock on this chip is 3.6 gigahertz so once we drop below that we know we're definitely thermal limiting uh, but yeah, we're bouncing between 89 and looks to be about 93 degrees right off the bat. So I don't have high hopes that the 3800X can actually be run on uh, a, a CPU cooler that you forgot to take the plastic off. Yeah, now we're hitting the limit of 95 degrees, which is gonna start dropping our CPU clocks sometime soon. So two minutes into the stress test and we are actually still hovering right around that 94 and a half to 95 degrees Celsius mark, but our clock speeds actually haven't dropped. We're still sitting at 3.95 gigahertz, right just below four gigahertz, which is where we started all of this off. So temperatures, are high, clock speed doesn't look to be affected as of right now. So we'll, we'll again, wait till 10 minutes, see if we see any clock speed drop over the, the duration to see if there's a performance hit from screwing all of this up. Okay, as we hit the 10 minute mark on this stress test, we're still at 95 degrees, which is technically the peak that this CPU should be at, but the clocks again have dropped by uh, 10 megahertz. We are currently at 3.94 gigahertz instead of 3.95, which doesn't seem to be a performance loss whatsoever, uh, even though the thermal temperatures are quite so high. I think this puts it in stark contrast to the Ryzen 3 1200, which just I wouldn't have even noticed that something was wrong with the cooler because it only gave me four degrees more than the stock stealth cooler, which obviously isn't great, but 64 degrees Celsius at 100% load isn't too alarming. With this one hitting 100 degrees Celsius under load, I would absolutely end up investigating what the heck did I do wrong with this system. But it does seem like there wouldn't be terrible performance loss, at least in the short term, because again, this is a stress test where you're hitting the CPU 100%. And when you're playing video games, typically, especially with the 3700X, you're not utilizing all eight cores continuously for a long period of time. But also, if you put the panels on here, I'm sure that clock speed difference would continue to drop and we'd probably get to the realm of some thermal throttling. So leaving the plastic on your cooler actually doesn't seem 
like such a hindrance if you're using a lower end chip. The four core, four thread, 65 watt Ryzen 3 1200 AF doesn't seem to have an issue with it, but the eight core, 16 thread, 95 watt TDP chip absolutely does seem to struggle with leaving the plastic on there, even if even if we wouldn't actually see that much clock speed decrease, you would notice your thermals actually being higher than they otherwise would. And I think the last thing that I wanna do, I'm not gonna go ahead and move on to the 9900K because if the 3700X is performing this bad, I think we can guarantee that the 9900K is just absolutely going to explode upon contact with the plastic. I actually wanna go ahead and see what the CPU cooler looks like at this point after running close to 100 degrees Celsius for nearly 10 minutes. Is the plastic durable enough has it survived kind of curious about that as much as i am about the performance of the processor that actually doesn't look too bad no melting whatsoever let's go ahead and clean it off with some alcohol one for me and yeah no no damage to the actual sticker itself this is not necessarily what i was expecting i was expecting at least some uh perversion of the sticker but nothing Nothing's going on at all. It just looks pretty normal after it's been cleaned off. I'm kind of wondering, and you guys can let me know down in the comments, should I do a more long-term test? Leave the 3700X in here, leave the, the cooler with the sticker still on it for like, 24 hours and then report back to you. Obviously that would be a bit more of an intensive video and not really the scope of what we were looking at here. I was kind of just looking at immediate impact. Would you necessarily notice? And with the 1200, you wouldn't, but could you potentially cause some melting to happen if you left it on for quite some time? Curious, but I could do a 24 hour test in a separate video, but for this, I'm done. The 1200, I would have no clue that I had screwed up with the cooler installation. 3700X, obviously quite clear. Anyways, let me know what you thought of this. Is this something uh, that you wanted to always know? How bad could it be? We're gonna be planning on doing some more of these types of videos here over on the Brainish channel because these are thoughts from my anus and things that I just always wanted to know about computers and what happens if you do the wrong thing. Because I like doing the wrong thing a lot. It's fun to see what goes wrong with this. So hit the like button, get subscribed, I'll do the, YouTube.